this is one of my more obscure subjects, Adam Adamant Lives was a mid-60s adventure show about an Edwardian hero who's basically a cross between James Bond and the Punisher, as in he obsessively kills criminals, but does it for the British government. One day in 1902, his arch nemesis, The Face, freezes him and he's eventually discovered and unthawed in the middle of the swinging six days. This might sound a bit familiar, seeing as he's one of the inspirations for Austin Powers. Once unfrozen, he continues his government-sanctioned war on crime, stopping an SS-themed security company who are robbing people with the aid of a supercomputer, an incest a Christian fundamentalist faking the end of the world, some undertakers who are faking the deaths of rich clients to help them avoid tax and then murdering them for the insurance, and my personal favourite, an evil detergent company using drugged-out plastic flowers to enact the fascist takeover of the United Kingdom. It appears that 1966 has a great deal of capacity for a man of my talent. In short, this show was amazing, and I had videos in every surviving episode. Anyway, after those videos, I realised something about Adam. Look at him, he's noticeably darker than his companions, Miss Jones and Sims. Now, I am sure this is makeup designed to look good in black and white filming, or supposed to give him a heroic, bronzed look. And it is makeup. Gerald Harper, who played Adam, and wore dark makeup, fake dark eyebrows, and a wig to put apart. But in universe, what is it? Originally, I thought it could be a tan because the show began in 1902, and he's a sort of travel around the Empire and have adventures. But it's not a tan because he wakes up in the mid 60s, he never leaves England again, and it never fades. Mid 60s London was hardly awash with tanning beds, seeing as they'd yet to be invented, and Adamant, being a man firmly the late Victorian and Edwardian era, wouldn't use them anyway. Apart from anything else, in the era he came from, a tan was the sign of working outdoors, of rural poverty. And one of Adam's most enchanting characteristics is his outright refusal to modernise. Anything. So what is that? To answer that, I'm going to bring up another famous Victorian hero of Queen and Country with a jokey name. James Fitzjames. Fitzjames was a noble bastard who went into the military and developed a reputation for his charm, zeal and heroism. He'd be the first in combat, would be fearless, and would write comedy poems about his experiences. And I'm not kidding about that. His father was James Gambier, and his name literally means James, son of James. He was raised by another family, but knew his origins, and made a concerted effort to hide them and create his own myth. It wasn't until 150 years after his disappearance that a biographer worked off Fitzjames' James' secret shame, his parentage. And the biographer, William Battersby, concluded that his mother wasn't English that she was Portuguese or Brazilian and had been born in Rio, with Portuguese possibly as his first language. Now, Battersby later changed his mind and concluded that Fitzjames' mother was English, but it got me thinking about Adamant. What if Adam de Vere Adamant's father was a noble working for the British Raj in the 1860s and his mother was an Indian from the local elite? The colonial social circles were not exclusive. In fact, prior to the 1857 revolt, British and Indian marriages were kind of commonish. So I see Adamant's parents having an affair that ends abruptly when he's recalled to London, taking young Adam with him where he's raised by someone connected to his father but with minimal contact from him, just like Fitzjames. Feeling shame at his origins in such a racist society, Adamant joins the military to prove himself and it's a resounding success. He does all he can to hide his origins, which isn't as hard as you'd think because a lot of Anglo-Indians are white passing. I mean, look at Ben Kingsley. Of course, there's another, slightly different possibility that explains Adamant as well, if not better. You see, Adamant is an unreconstructed Victorian, but not in a malicious or hateful way. He's unerringly polite to friends, strangers and foes. He's fair, and he fights honourably. It's like he's taken all the myths the British Victorian culture told itself about itself, and he absorbed it in a fundamental level. To explain what I mean, here's War from Star Trek. He's a Klingon raised by humans, but is more honourable than any Klingon in the show's history. Why? Because other Klingons grew up in the Klingon society, they absorbed the reality of it. The hypocrisies had to bend the rules, the bigotries. While Worf grew up reading Klingon myths, and he made an effort to emulate those myths. If Adamant was raised in India with stories of London surrounded by Victorian cultural propaganda, tales of honest and honourable gentlemen, and he took the stories to heart, it would explain a hell of a lot about his character basically making him a Victorian anglo weeaboo. I don't know if you've ever seen this show, but Adamant is basically the avatar of the best Victorian Britain, at least how it saw itself. Much in the same way that Steve Rogers is the avatar of the best of the mid-century USA. Now, this wasn't intended by the makers of the show, but if there's ever a remake, I think this is the way to go. It adds a real and 
kind of tragic death to a guy who can so easily be a caricature or a cartoon. Let's go. 